Wow, it's a Luna Moth. Incredible. Luna Moths make amazing pets and make for a great opportunity to learn about insects. How to breed the Luna Moth? Let me show you how to breed them as your pets. Step 1. The eggs. The eggs. The eggs of Luna Moths are best obtained and incubated in a small plastic container or a petri dish. Keep them on room temperature on about 20 degrees Celsius. If you did it correctly, the baby should hatch between 10 to 15 days. Step number two. Step two, baby caterpillars. Add some food plant to a plastic container and transfer the young caterpillars on the leaves. Very important is not to crush the young caterpillars. They are so small and delicate you can hurt them using your fingers. Use a paintbrush or something soft. It's okay to keep the babies in a plastic box for about a week. The Luna Moth can eat many plants including willow, oak tree, walnut, persimmon, cherry, birch tree and much more. In this video I'm using their favorite, sweet gum. I highly recommend using sweet gum. Step number three. Step three, big caterpillars. Pay attention. This is the most important and difficult step. After about a week, they will shed their skins and look much bigger. Now from this point, it is important that you move them out of the plastic box into a bigger cage. This is important because only the newly born Luna Moth caterpillars tolerate being raised in a plastic box. But older and larger caterpillars will die in plastic boxes since it is too humid for them and they need more airflow. This is the most critical step and the one that takes the most time and effort, so please pay close attention. Pick some branches from the food plant that you are using and fill some of the containers with water. You can use a can, a bottle or anything else. After that make sure to close the neck of the bottle with paper, aluminium foil or cling wrap. Otherwise the caterpillars can crawl inside of the bottle and drown. Placing the food plant in the water will keep it fresh, much like flowers in a vase. Make sure to replace the plant every few days when all the leaves have been eaten. No one likes to be completely out of food, especially not caterpillars. Make sure they have fresh leaves at all times. Alright people, so here I have some sweet gum, but more importantly, look where I put the sweet gum. Ta -da 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 -da. In a tiny water-filled bottle. The water in this bottle is going to keep the plant fresh and hydrated, kind of like flowers in a vase. And like this it can last for like six days before you have to refresh it. And I'm going to put the lunar moth caterpillars in this right now. Inside a cage, a mini insect cage that I bought online. Let's uh, see how it works. What's up everyone? Our Muna, Luna Moth cage has been awfully quiet. So we're gonna see what's up. Once they grow even bigger, move the caterpillars to an even bigger cage. They like to have a generous amount of space. Now remember they are solitary animals and overcrowding them can give them deadly diseases. Oh wow look, these caterpillars are really almost fully grown. It looks like we've done a good job. Just make sure to follow all the five steps in this video. When the caterpillars turn orange, they are ready to spin cocoons. This is known as pre-pupil coloration or the wandering phase. Orange caterpillars will walk around aimlessly for about a day before spinning a silk cocoon. Carefully pull the cocoons off the branches. Don't worry, they can take it. Make sure not to throw any cocoons away, they can be sneakily hidden between the leaves. Step number four. Step number four, the cocoons. The cocoon stage is super easy. 
They don't need much maintenance at all. Right now there are two things that could happen. Either the cocoons will hatch in a few months time or they will decide to hibernate. Hibernation mostly depends on the time of the year. If it is autumn or winter, the moth's instincts may tell it not to come out of its cocoon anymore. You see, in nature this species hibernates in the cocoon stage. In this case, you can place the cocoons outdoor in a safe, sheltered place. But in captivity you can also use the refrigerator sometimes, as long as they are cold. Don't worry, they are really cold resistant. Hibernating Luna Moss. Yeah, boy. Luna Moss. Some of you guys will say, Bart, isn't that bad for them? Aren't they going to freeze to death? Here they are, the cocoons. This is the proof, see? My answer to that is no, you dummy. This species comes from places like Canada, where it can be minus 20 degrees Celsius in winter. This is nothing to them. One tip if you want to hibernate your insects is put them cold, and I am serious about it. Temperatures like these are good for them. In spring, you can warm them up again. If you are lucky, the cocoons don't need to hibernate at all. Because they usually have several broods per year before hibernating. In most cases, the moths will start hatching in one to three months time if they don't hibernate and if kept warm on room temperature. And before you know it, your babies will be born. Step number five. Five the moths. Now this is to be honest, perhaps the most easy part. Because Luna moths don't really take much maintenance at all. You see, Luna moths, they don't have a mouth and they cannot eat. They essentially starve to death over time. It sounds morbid, but that's how the life cycle of many moths ends. These moths live off the fat reserve that they have gathered as caterpillars and they only live for about 15 to 7 days. So one or two weeks, most of the time. And in captivity, the main thing that they do is mate, lay eggs and die. That's about it. That being said, they are incredibly beautiful, incredibly fascinating. And the cool thing about keeping them in captivity is not just keeping the moths themselves, but observing the whole life cycle. It's a fantastic educational project. And both the moths and caterpillars are completely harmless. They are not poisonous or venomous. So it's a very family-friendly science project. In captivity, these moths can be kept in cages made from netting. Now, these moths will mate very easily in captivity, to be honest. As long as you have males and females, just place them in a dark place at night. And sometimes the next morning they will have mated. It's easy to see if they have mated because the male and female will be attached. Wow, a fantastic result, guys. Isn't that amazing? This is breeding Luna moths in five steps. Once they have mated, the females will start laying eggs everywhere in captivity. You can collect the eggs in a petri dish or another container. You can sell them to other breeders, give them away to friends, or ex exchange them for different moth species. Thank you for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. This was the Luna Moth in 5 steps. If you successfully raise the Luna Moth, maybe you are ready to try different species. There's good news. There are many moth species around the world that you can raise in captivity. And if you want to know how to do this, you better subscribe to my channel because I produce guides and care sheets that you can follow of how to breed particular species of moths. Bye bye.